close your eyes and watch your breath for a while. Try to stay with the breath all the way in, all the way out, each breath as it comes in and it goes out. Try to be consistent here. Stick with the breath so the mind will have a place to rest. Otherwise the mind goes jumping around all the time looking for happiness. It doesn't get it here, it jumps over there. It doesn't get it there, it jumps over someplace else. It's jumping around all the time. There's no happiness there, even though it may get a little taste of pleasure here and there. But the fact that you have to keep jumping means that there's no real rest. There's no real deep satisfaction or contentment in the mind. What you've got to train the mind to do is stay with one thing until it starts getting better. Like the breath. The more you stay with the breath, the more you find that you can adjust the breath in a way that feels really soothing throughout the whole body. It feels really good. And when the body feels soothed from inside, again, then it's a lot easier to stay here. It's more pleasant to stay here. Even when there are pains in different parts of the body, you can focus on the areas that you can make comfortable. And that way the mind has a good, solid resting place. We come to the monastery because we're looking for happiness, and we realize that we have to be responsible for our happiness in two ways. One is that we have to be the ones who create that, and that two, we want to do it in a responsible way. In other words, in a way that doesn't harm anybody else. Because if your pleasure harms somebody else, okay, there's going to be a reaction. They're not going to stand for it. They're going to want to destroy whatever it is that your pleasure or your happiness is based on. So you want to look for a kind of happiness that is responsible. In other words, it's safe and it's also under, under your control, something that you can create. And the Buddha points out there are basically three ways we do this. One is through generosity, the other is through virtue, and the third is through meditation. Generosity is when you're giving of things, not just things. You can give of your time, you can give of your, your knowledge. When someone else is, is giving something or doing something good, you see that it's a good thing. Well, that's an act of generosity as well. It's called anamodana in Thai. Anamodana in Pali, anamodana in Thai. And that's when you see someone else has done good, and you say, well, that's a good thing. It's good that good things are being done in the world. You're not jealous of the other person. You don't deprecate what they're doing. You see that that goodness is good. And that encourages you to do what kind of goodness you can. In terms of your knowledge, even giving your forgiveness, that's a kind of, a kind of generosity as well. You think that that would be the easiest to give because it doesn't require any material wealth. It doesn't require any special strength of body. But it does require a certain strength of mind. If someone has wronged you, you say, well, just tell yourself, I'm not going to try to get revenge on that person. You don't have to love the person. Just say, I'm not going to get back at them for that. And that kind of forgiveness is a gift. It keep, means that whatever unskillful thing they did just stops right there and doesn't get continued through your actions. Finding happiness in these kinds of things is one of the skillful ways of finding happiness, because again, it causes no harm to anybody and it creates more goodness in the world. Virtue is when you learn how to refrain from unskillful actions. In other words, there's things you know that are going to be harmful to yourself or to others, and you just don't do them. You don't kill, you don't steal, you don't have illicit sex, you don't lie, you don't take, take intoxicants. Because if you do these things, you realize it creates harm. And again, if there, whatever pleasure you get out of doing those things, it's going to be the, it's going to come back to bite you. Compare it to a snake, and the, the, the snake has teeth on one end and it doesn't have teeth on the other end. You think, well, the other end must be safe; it doesn't have teeth, so you catch the snake by the tail. Well, of course, it's going to turn around and bite you. The kinds of pleasures we have that cause harm to ourselves and other people will turn around and bite us at some point. So you decide that you're just going to refrain from that. And there's a kind of happiness, there's a sense of well-being, there's a sense of inner self-respect that comes from that. And that kind of happiness is harmless and it's solid and lasting. Finally, the happiness that comes from meditation, when you can get your mind under control, so that when it starts thinking about things you know are bad or harmful or unskillful, that you know you can just say no and train the mind well enough so it can drop those things. And instead you stay with things that give nourishment to the mind, thoughts that give nourishment to the mind. Things like the breath that allow the mind to settle down and develop good qualities like mindfulness, alertness, discernment, concentration. The happiness that comes from this is it goes deep. In fact, it goes a lot deeper even than generosity and virtue because it goes deep into the mind. Because that's what we're all what happiness is all about. It's a happiness that goes into the mind. It's not just a physical pleasure. It's a pleasure that goes deep down inside and then stays there. So this is why we meditate, and this is why we come to the monastery, because we want a happiness that we can be responsible for. In other words, one that we create through our actions and that we're responsible for the consequences of our happiness. 
That way there's nothing to be ashamed about our, our quest for happiness. Other people may look for happiness in other ways, but you look at what they're doing and the, the damage they cause to the world, you, have, you tell yourself, well, I don't want to go there. Maybe I can't stop them, but at least I can stop myself. And maybe I can do some good and leave some good behind in the world. And then you can look at your life and be proud of it. That's the kind of happiness we're looking for here. <laughs>